There are several different questions that I ask every client that comes in, a potential client comes in for a consult. One of the questions I ask is whether or not they've worked with a personal trainer before. And some have, and many haven't. But there's a false understanding that they think that we're going to just walk in and start working out the first day. And that I'm going to throw them on machines or start throwing weights at them or have them get on a cardio piece and just start going for a amount of time. But actually, there's a process to building a program. In fact, there's a science to it and exercise science to it. And there's a very unique method that an exercise physiologist uses to build an exercise program for a client today on the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast. Welcome to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast with Garrett Williamson. Health, wellness, exercise, nutrition, and a whole lot more. Got questions? Call us and leave a message at 251-278-EDGE or message us at Personal Edge Fitness on Facebook and Instagram at Team PE on Twitter or PersonalEdgeFitness.com. Good day and welcome to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Garrett Williamson. I'm president of Personal Edge Fitness and the host of the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast. Podcast set up to dispel the myths of health, fitness, and wellness. Like I say, thank you so much for joining me today. We're actually going to go through the process that an exercise physiologist uses to put together an exercise routine or exercise program for a client. And you may be surprised at what we actually focus on. In fact, if uh, you're like the vast majority of clients that come in to see us for their first consult, you're going to be shocked at what we actually are looking for and how we actually build the program. Before I get into it, I want to let you know how to get in touch with the show if you have any questions about this podcast or any others, or if you have a question about dispelling the myths of health, fitness, and wellness, please reach out to us, area code 251-278-3343. That's 251-278-EDGE. You can also reach me at Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T-T, at personaledgefitness.com. Personaledgefitness.com, of course, is our website. Personal Edge Fitness is our Facebook page. Hit us up on X at Team PE if you so desire. I realize that there's several little phrases that I use on the show and what I'm is that, that I've said this on many podcasts and of course this is yet again I'm saying that I've said this on many podcasts that I've been doing this I've actually been a personal trainer for 32 years now I have a bachelor's degree in exercise science I have a master's degree in health fitness management and so does my staff all of our staff members here at personal edge for our 24 year history all of our staff members have possessed at minimum a bachelor's degree in the field to be their exercise science exercise physiology, kinesiology, sport medicine, or athletic training. And those last two fields are actually rehab fields because we do a lot of prehab, rehab, and post-rehab work. But why? I mean, it sounds great. It's impressive. It's great for the brand. Marketing is it's fantastic for marketing. But why would I go so far as to have a requirement that every staff member has a bachelor's degree in one of those fields? Well, I want the best. I mean, first and foremost, I want the best. The best has to have not only the personality to work with clients because there's several people out there that are what I call educated well beyond their level of intelligence. Just because you're walking around with a degree does not mean you can train. In fact, let me back up a little bit. Every year we have trainers call up that are interested in working here. Young gentleman, nice gentleman, just contacted me two months ago that was interested in working with us, wanted to work in our Eastern Shore location. Even talked about possibly bringing us some clients. I asked him about how long he was in the field. Well, it was a side job, and he had just gotten his weekend certification. Now, I call it a weekend certification because most of these personal training certifications you can get through a weekend's worth of work, if, if, if that. Some of the certifications you can get within an hour. <laughs> I'd be hard-pressed to believe that the individual that gets that certification has the background in anatomy and physiology and kinesiology or rehab or even basic strength training to be an effective trainer. But there's much more to it than just lifting weights or knowing a bunch of exercises. And it doesn't matter that I've worked out for, you know, 40 years in a gym or what have you. It doesn't matter. There's more to it, far more to it than that. And this is why we have that requirement. Ours is an unlicensed field. And I'm not a big fan of the government being involved in anything that I do. But since it's unlicensed, anybody, any Tom, Dick, Carrie, or Jane can call themselves a personal trainer. And that's true. So in order to maintain that brand, in order to maintain the quality of service that we have for the last 24 years here at Personal Edge Fitness, we have always required that degree. And it's it's bode well for us, as you've heard the numbers before. Average tenure of a personal training client nationwide is 18 months. Average tenure of a personal edge personal training client is 5.7 years. The average tenure, this is a surprising fact that most people don't know, the average tenure of a personal training career, I'm going to be a personal trainer, I'm going to work as a personal trainer, this is going to be my job, this is going to be my career, I got my certification, I'm ready to go, I've even got my degree, 
and I'm ready to go. Average tenure of a personal training career, according to URSA, and that's the largest association we have in health, fitness, and wellness, is two years. The average tenure of a personal edge staff member is seven years. And why? Well, of course, we do things a little different. A lot of it boils down to how do we set up a program for a client? And I've never talked about that before, so I'm going to dive into it today. There are several steps we go through, and you're going to be surprised. I'm sure you're going to be surprised. Of course, first thing we do, and with our new app, with our new Pledge app, we actually have, before somebody comes in for a consult, we have them fill out the survey that we produce for our app because it tells us a lot of information about them. When you may be thinking it's like a regular health risk appraisal, something we've used for years, uh, HRA, their height, their weight, their blood pressure, what are your top three goals? That's about it. Maybe you go so far as to what uh, injuries do you have or what have you. Those are what we call people's X's and O's. That's kind of the basics, the very basics. Our survey goes deeper. We're interested in knowing more about your lifestyle. We're interested in knowing more about your mindset, knowing a lot more about you, because that's where we kind of start to really build a program. We see the same problems in exercise programs and exercise prescription as we do in diet prescription. It is a common misbelief that I'll go to a dietitian, hopefully not a nutritionist, that's another weekend certification, but go to a dietitian and they'll just write me a diet. Here, here's your diet and you go eat like this. Well, here's the problem with that. And this is why this rarely, if ever works, unless it's just for a short amount of time. If it's scripted for a short amount of time, like our Catalyst program, which is 18 weeks, or our In It To Lose It program, which is two weeks, that's a short matter of time. You can plan for it. You can make it happen for a short matter of time. But this is why I'm going to write you a diet, and that never works. I have had clients after client after client tell me, just tell me what to eat, I'll eat that. Here's the problem. And the same problem happens, the same problem happens in exercise, and that is now you're going to have to change your entire life to fit that diet. What if at lunch you're supposed to have a ham sandwich, and you have no access to ham? <laughs> you're at a restaurant, they don't serve ham. What do you do now? And most people say, well, that diet failed me. No, it, you tried to change your life to a diet. Same thing happens in exercise. Somebody can give me those X's and O's. And I actually say this in my consult. If somebody can give me those X's and O's, and I can hand those X's and O's to my entire staff. And I promise you, I tell them to write me a program up for this person. They're going to come in this many days a week. Write me a program. I'm going to get back 10 of the most amazing fitness programs. I promise you. And I, I guarantee you, I bet my life on it, that if this client were to do any one of those programs exactly as they're written, they would hit their goals. That really is the easy part. That's simple. The problem is none of those 10 programs may fit this client. And you may say to yourself, yeah, but you know what? Not me. No, I, I, I do exactly what you tell me to eat. As a client of mine told me, I'm a good student. Just tell me what to do and I'll do exactly that. I promise you, you won't. If it doesn't fit your head, I promise you, you may force yourself through it, but you're going to quit. You're going to be miserable because it first and foremost has to fit your head. And that's the first step we look at. We actually look at the mindset of the client. What do I mean by mindset of the client? Well, I'm interested in how some folks love exercise. Some, some people just, just absolutely love exercise, period. They love to exercise. This is great. This is fantastic. Bring it on. I, I love doing this. Then you have people that don't care for exercise. Now, I've had people sit across from me, folded arms. They have to be here, and they have to be here because they've hit a, some kind of a medical event. They've had a heart attack. They've been told by their doctor that, hey, you need to lose weight or you need to get in shape or they have an injury. I have to rehab this. Physical therapists see this all the time. Somebody that needs to rehab their shoulder. But they're looking at how many days do I have to come in here because I really don't like exercise. That's the tip of the iceberg. You know, somebody that may or may not like exercise. It goes deeper than that, though. What if we have this person that loves exercise? Oh, great. That's easy. Fantastic. That person loves exercise. Get going. Consult over. Nope. <laughs> goes even deeper than that. I love exercise, obviously. <laughs> I've picked a career in it. I train myself. I, as I've said many times on the show, there's that, colloquial, there's that little phrase again. As I've said many times on the show, I still race myself. I love, love racing. I race for Team USA. I'm going, to, I'm going to, I believe it's going to be my 11th world championship. At the end of this uh, year in August, I'm going to Australia and, and representing Team USA in the Aquathlon World Championships. At 55 years old, that's exciting, and I <laughs> never plan to stop. Absolutely love it. So I love exercise, but I don't like training the way my exercise coordinator likes to train. You're going to talk about somebody who likes exercise. This guy, I think, lifts for it. 
I have one of my exercise specialists. I know for a fact he lives for He loves to exercise. He actually played football on scholarship because he liked to train. That, that was the reason he actually played football. My exercise coordinator, another, he also played college ball. He played on scholarship. He was roommates with Stetson Bennett. Loves designing programs. I actually have sent him for advanced certifications because he, because he loves exercise. That's why he's our exercise coordinator. He loves it when I give him a challenge of, hey, this person needs an off-session workout what we call an extricular workout, and they need some special, they've got some special considerations. He absolutely loves that. He and two of my other trainers love to do dead simmer every year. They do squat tober every year. But that's the kind of exercise that I'm not a big fan of. That's not the kind of exercise I like. I like more of a high intensity. I like call them a short digestible workouts. I like workouts that are intense, but I can see the end of it when I start. Basically, I look at it and go, okay, well, I've got to do a minute on 30 seconds off of each one of these exercises. But once I hit 20 of these, I'm done. That's what I like. The other thing that speaks to me, runners love, have a runner's high. They love to run. They do it more for their mind than they do for their body. Walkers do the same thing. For me, I'm a runner. I race in running. It's swimming. Swimming, I can go and, and just do lap after lap after lap, and it's great for my head. So even when you have a fantastic exercise, you got to find what type of exercise do you like. And for the non-exerciser, okay, let's find out something that, since you don't like, ex- don't like exercise, but you need to be here, and you showed up here, you showed up, you were not forced to come here. Okay, let's find something that you either like or you don't mind or what we call is least offensive to you. And finding that method is going to be the successful method. Now, you may be thinking, well, Garrett, gosh, you know, just just give them the right exercises and they just, just force them to do it. The death nail, the death nail to a personal training career is to ever believe that you can make anybody do anything. I promise you, you're going to fail. You will never make anybody do anything. Think about it. Even if you have a gun to your head, trust me, you still got a decision to make. <laughs> you still are in control. So you've got to find the ways, the exercises, the type of the modality of exercise that works for somebody's head, that makes sense to them, that that they are going to not have as much of a challenge or either not have as much of a challenge to come to the facility and go through, or they're going to just really love, they look forward to it. That's awesome. And it all depends on how they're motivated. And it, it goes deeper than that. Then you've got to look at how do they like to be motivated? Do they like a cheering squad? Do they like recognition? Do they like, how do they like to be recognized? Do they like the entire facility to be excited about it? Do they like, do they want certain metrics? You know, every six weeks I'm going to be measured on this metric. Okay, fantastic. That motivates. Sometimes that doesn't motivate people whatsoever. We have people in, that train with us, have trained with us for years and never stepped on a scale. You may find that ridiculous. And they may be here for weight loss. That doesn't motivate them. So it's got to be what works for their head. Next step. Okay. What about your lifestyle? You know, this happens in January. You know, oh man, I'm going to start a fitness program. I'm going to dive headfirst into it. I'm going to work out five days a week for an hour. I'm going to go at five in the morning. This is not foreign to any of us, this thought process, I'm sure. Some of you have probably been through that. I saw my Facebook feed in January. I noticed a good friend of mine from high school, and he had posted up here at 5 a.m. with the hard workers. And I was thinking, wow, I know that guy. I don't, I don't think he's ever seen 5 a.m. in his life. I wish him well. I hope it works great for him. But too many times, do something like that, and you realize... It doesn't fit your lifestyle or because what we do is lifestyle modification. They're not really wanting to desire to change their lifestyle that much, maybe temporarily. And we're more than glad to accommodate that, but not for long term. You also maybe think I'm going to train for a marathon. Great, great. We'll go from walking to uh, a mile to three miles to five miles to 10 miles to 14 to 12, whatever. Okay, great. Do you have a job? What time do you get off work? Do you have any responsibilities outside of that? Do you have a spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend? How about kids? You have other commitments? Are you on a board? Are you a member of your church? Are you a member of your deacon or something? What are your time commitments? Because writing up that great program and then looking at a, a schedule that is in no way going to give you enough time to do that training program, that's a recipe for failure. You may have that desire. You may have that desire and think only of all I've got to commit to it is I've got an hour or four days a week that I can commit to it, or I've got a half hour, seven days a week, or whatever that I can commit to it. Okay, now we need to reshape your program. Even if we're going to train for a marathon, we're going to do it anaerobically instead of aerobically. Anaerobic is without oxygen. Aerobically is with oxygen. Aerobically is is what you think of in cardio, that you can run at about 70% of your max. In an aerobic program, to get the same results as you do in an anaerobic program, it takes longer, but it's not as hard. Not as intense. Anaerobic is sprint, recover, sprint, recover, sprint, recover. Basically, that's the, that's the mindset. 
lift hard, recover, lift hard, recover, lift hard, recover. High intensity interval training is anaerobic training. And we can use that to train somebody for a marathon. So again, lifestyle has a lot to do with it. Then after that, you've got to look at, you've got to go back to your X's nose and look at, you know, modalities. What limitations do they have? What can we feasibly do at the same time looking at their goals? What are their goals? This is not a one size fits all by any means. Like I said, I've been training for 32 years. I've never had a program look alike. I've never had two programs look alike because of the mindset, lifestyle, goals, limitations, and likes and dislikes of a program for a client. So every program is going to look different. So this is why, this is why we have the staff that we do. This is why we spend the time that we do in a consult and we're constantly reevaluating that. We're also matching that person up with personalities on our staff. Who's their best client coordinator? Who's their best exercise specialist? Who do they like to work with? Do they like to work with more of a variety? They're always going to work with at least more than one, at least two trainers, but we may find that they like working with a variety of people or what they're interested in. I have folks on staff that are, that are more experienced than that or have more of a like for that. We do the same thing with our staff. We want to fit them to the type of training that they like to do. So all this goes into account before we even set somebody on the floor, before we even start them in their first workout with well, this is an evaluation workout. This is why my staff, not only myself, but my staff has dedicated lives to and why it's called exercise science. There is a science to it. And there's a big difference in just throwing somebody into an exercise program and actually build one for a client. If you have any questions about this and if you need help putting this program together, we can either have you, of course, train with us. But through our pledge program, we can give you coaching, accountability, that survey and your consult, whether you are in Mobile or you're, if you're in Tahiti doesn't matter. If you want that coaching and accountability, check out our pledge program. Contact me at area code 251-278-3343. That's 251-278-EDGE. You can also reach me at Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T-T, at personaledgefitness.com. That, of course, is my email address, uh, personaledgefitness.com, our website, Personal Edge Fitness, our Facebook page. Hit me up on Twitter, at Team PE. If we can help you build your own program, and we would love the opportunity to do that, whether you train with us or not. Taking the science out of building this program is a recipe for failure. Putting the science in, putting the time in, is just one more way we help you reach your level of wellness. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast with Garrett Williamson. Subscribe now and be a part of the show by calling 251-278-EDGE or message us on Facebook and Instagram at Personal Edge Fitness or at Team PE on Twitter and visit us at personaledgefitness.com.